Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. In this video, we're going to design a welcome sign. Hang around. This is a three layer design. It's easy to do, and this is gonna be a full instructional video. Okay, so a couple of days ago, I was asked to make a Highland cow design for a door hanger. And I'm trying to make the projects on the diode, so it's going to be, at best, you know, 12 inches wide. And I designed this as big as I could, but it still was lacking something. So this was the Highland cow. Now it's just going to hang on the on the, the center of the door. And I said, you know, I said, it, I said we need a welcome or, uh, you know, get out or... Uh, any something, it, uh, you know, so I, I come up with this accent piece. So that hangs like so. And I think that looked really good and complemented each other really well. And this is what we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to create this signage uh, that you can create and put any kind of word on there you can see it's very very easy but these designs are available on hobowithwood.com if you do not want to go in and create your own but this is really really simple so let's put all this away and jump in here to light burn so this is not that difficult this toolpath i have on here is a I think it's 300, uh, yeah, 300 by 300 millimeter toolpath, which is about 12 by 12 inches. It's just under 12. And this is the Baltic birch that I have to work with. So that's the first thing I do is I put me a template on my work bed to know what I need to design within this area. Now, I want to be able to get all of this out of one sheet of of plywood and it's three layers so if each layer took equal amounts of space that means that these are going to be uh, at best each layer at 100 millimeters but I'm not going to need equal amounts on the bottom two layers or the words the text so I can afford to be a little bit bigger on the top piece but let's see how this works out I want to do four slats across running horizontally and then three that run vertically as its backboards or support so the way I look at it is I start my tool and and before I start drawing them out I'm like okay well how many how, the dimensions let's start with 20 mil, 20 millimeters and if I come here start drawing out There we go. All right, so there's 20, milli 20 millimeters by 280 millimeters. That gives me a little buffer around the edge for my hold downs. And now let's do four slats. Let's put this on a uh, different path let's put, so we can see it better. I want four of these this size with spacing in between them and let's do mm, three millimeters yeah three millimeters of spacing and that would be and if they're 20 millimeters across that's four times 20 is 80 plus three millimeters three times so it's gonna be a total height of 89 millimeters so let's draw another tool path real quick and we're just going to draw it out and just put in our dimensions put it on a tool path and we're gonna say what was that uh, 280 by 89 so 280 280 millimeters millimeters by 89 millimeters now I'm gonna bring that right over to the corner of my first piece now I'm going to select my original piece and I need 
three duplicates. So hold down control and hit the letter D one, two, three times. I'm going to drag one of those over here so I can grab the corner of it and bring it into position there. Now I will select that toolpath, delete that toolpath, draw a selector tool around those and tell it here, distribute selected objects vertically with even spacing between them. And there we go. And I should have, while those were selected, go ahead and group those. Group. Now we're going to draw a piece. Uh, we'll do 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters wide and five millimeters above the thick, the height and below the board, give or take. So let's do if this was 89 plus 10, so it should be 99 millimeters. 99 millimeters. There we go. Now put this one on, select it, put it on a path, a cut path there. I want three of these. So let's first hit Control D one time. We're going to duplicate it once. Come out here and put it approximately where I want it to be, which is about there. Now I'll hit Control D again. Now there's two of those there. Hold my Shift key, select this one, align them together horizontally. I don't know if that's really necessary right now, but with those selected, now I will use, actually, after I've done that, now just draw a selector tool around those and come up here to this one, which is distribute selected objects horizontally with even space between them. First we did it vertically, now we're doing horizontally. Now that we've got those all distributed correctly and aligned correctly, group them, hold our shift key, select our first group and tell it to go to center. And now those are now centered up. And while they were still selected, you could have just said weld. Now there is the beginnings of our sign and somebody's messaging me why I'm recording. They can wait. All right, now there's the beginning of it. Now let's go into our text tool and type out the word welcome. And you're gonna to wanna to find a font that you like, but you're also gonna to need to pay attention to the size of the font because we're going to be creating an inward offset, which means you can't have uh, too fine of a line within the inner parts, inner workings of your text, or else it's not going to work very well. So let's go in here. Let's find a better font. In fact, what I used to make this kind of a Western themed, I like uh, Playbill, which you can just type that out. Now, Playbill, really tightly condensed. You can use your horizontal spacing to space those out, but then I don't really like the way it gets spaced out. I think this one looks kind of okay when you get it out to about the size you want. Oh, undo that. Didn't mean to do that last bit of jump there. Get her down there. But I don't like how tall the letters are. It looks like it's stretched. So if I bring them down to what I feel is a correct proportion, which is about like so, I'm liking that, I think. Bring that up here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right. Once you've got the size you want, you're going to hit the letter, or hit, I'm sorry, hit Control D for duplicate. Then hold your Shift key, select your signage, tell it to go to center. Now, why it's there, now this is completely optional. And depending on the text you use and how well you can see this sign and how this stuff works, you may or may not want to do this. But I do this, especially when I'm using individual letters like this. With this selected, I come to my offset tool and I tell it I want to do outer shapes only. And I'm going to offset, um, yeah, a millimeter and a half is satisfactory. Say, so, okay. And now while that's selected, and in fact, let's go back to that and show you how I did that. 
go into offset. I did an inward offset. I want corners because if you don't pay attention, see how this W has got all the corners on this top up here. If you used a round offset, it rounds all of this off. Down here, instead of a sharp V point in the W, you get it rounded off. So I like corners like that. And then tell it to, we only need outer shapes in this instance, and tell it to select the resulting objects and say, okay, now go ahead and put that on another layer. We're putting that, for me, I'm putting it right now on the blue layer. And then come back to your original welcome, select it, hold your shift key, select that, and now we'll weld that together. The reason I did this blue inward offset and outer shapes only is I'm going to engrave that in a very, very low level in a line mode, and that will give me a template on my piece on where I'm going to glue those letters up. Because without that there, in this particular image with the way those are set up, with it's kind of vague to see where that the letters are going to go. You can get it figured out, but it's so much easier when you've got a path or a guide to go by. So I do that. Now here is my original size. Bring it up. We know that's going to fit on there because that's what we welded on and welded into the original sign. Now I'll take that and I'll come back to my offset tool. Now I'm going to do... Uh, Turn off the outer shapes only so we get that inner part of the E. So if, if that's turned on, we don't get that. And when, if you try to cut it out, you're going to be missing your inner part of your E. So turn off outer shapes only. And you're going to want to pay attention to your letters. Here is, let's see here, show you the, if we go to two millimeters, we just lost that inner part of that E. That's two and a half. So you got to pay attention to the size you and if you get too small then it's going to be very fragile to cut out paint glue up but in this case one and a half millimeters works that's going to be a strong piece and just make sure everything else looks good and say okay now that that's selected oh now that that's selected grab it and just drag it down set your cut uh, power and speed, speed speed settings set the power to the levels you need for your engraving of the word welcome for the template there and this is ready to send to the laser as is but we're going to make this a little bit more custom a little bit more unique right now it looks like it's well, it just we're going to add some character to it so let's select our sign Right now it's grouped because we've got all of these little bitty pieces inside here. So let's ungroup it. Then go to our node editing right there. Come over here to the side. And we're going to use node editing. And if you don't know what your tools are in node editing, if you hold your mouse right over there, it gives you your menu. All the things that you can do while editing nodes. Uh, S for smooth, L for uh, converting back to a line. Uh, C for converting to a corner, D for delete, I for insert, M is for midpoint, which is very valuable. B for break apart, come back here, I wasn't through with you. B for break apart, T for trim, E for extend, and A to align. Now, the, in this instance, we're going to use just the letter I, and we're going to insert a few nodes. And this is totally random, anywhere you want to put and I would recommend at least three nodes, and I'll probably do four in a few places. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And come over here, go one, and they say I'm hitting the letter I. I, I, and we'll do four. And let's come down here, I. And I, I, I. One, two, three and four I'm not I really don't want them um, evenly spaced I was trying to get them a little more a distance new now that you've got those in there all you have to do is just 
come up here and hover over the first node and move it inward. Skip this one, come over here to this one and move it inward. And depending on where you place it, you can put it up high or down here. We're gonna make these pieces jagged, look like they're broken. It was made out of scrap wood, this sign was. And we might even go ahead and insert one here and drag it there. Now we're going to come over here, do the same thing again. I, 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 I. That was four of them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One. You know, we'll do two here. And there's no right or wrong way to do this, where you place these, because the, the whole idea is you want it to look kind of random. In fact, we might take that one out. All right. Now we got one last thing to do. We got to put in our holes for our rope or however you're going to suspend this. So I come right here. There's a five millimeter hole and there's a five millimeter hole. Put both of them on a cut path, group those together and I know they're centered where I want them to be because I've got my snap to grid turned on and I snap that right into that grid, which is centered right over that. So I don't have to even check it. I know she's where I want it. So like that. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to say not to show. And then I'll just drag a selector tool around that entire piece up there and group that back together turn that back on and now that is ready to cut so that was really quick really easy really simple and you can do this doesn't matter what you and and uh what words you want to put in there and what i like about this particular design is you can now uh come in here you can make this as a template, you save it, and then if you want to add personalization, you can just do an engraving and say, um, in fact, we probably, you might even want to do it on a, in a different font for the personalization, but draw this up. Um, in fact, let's see, let's come here, come here. No, I'm on. There we go. And I don't like the spacing on that at all. And that's that's this font. Uh, where's my dead wood? No, we're not going to use dead wood because that one is it eats up a lot of uh, memory in the graphics card. Uh, just anything right now. But you've got a nice little space right up here for personalization. You get the idea. So guys, I really hope this was informative. I hope you uh, learned a little, little something, something. You can do this sign yourself or you can find it on hobowithwood.com. Uh, this is an example of some of the YouTube videos I do 
but it's also uh, an example of the type of videos I try to produce for my patrons. Detailed uh, instructions on how to create files. And then the patrons um, starting this quarter of 2023, I've made my first alterations to uh, patron, patron, Patreon. My uh, silver and gold tier will get access to the videos and the free files. The bronze levels, they're going to see the videos. I was hoping that in the first three months that the bronze level uh, patrons would see the value in the additional or being the value of being a patron and all the files that they get for free and would just step up and help me out. Uh, but I wasn't getting a lot of people who were upgrading. So I'm now starting to differ differentiate the benefits of Patreon. Bronze level, is, level members are going to see these detailed videos, but they won't have the free files. You will have to step up to the uh, silver or gold for the free files. And I I was leaving everything available, so if you had signed up in March, you would have had three months of videos and free files to have access to. If you signed up in July at the rate I was going, you'd had six months of free files. And if you signed up on a bronze level for three bucks, you'd had six months of free files. It'd been hundreds of dollars of free files. And so I'm like, okay, I gotta rethink this. So I'm keeping the files for free for the quarterly. So for the for three months, there'll be quarterly. And I may end up having to change it to monthly that they're only available for a month. That prevents people from jumping on, signing up and then canceling and waiting three months, sign up again. Uh, people play too many games. And I don't have the time really to do try and keep up with this, but it's also how I'm trying to make my living right now. So uh, I, I hate people that play games. I appreciate the support of all of my patrons. This is the one time a month that I do list my patrons uh, in the video. And your support, no matter which level you are supporting me, is greatly appreciated. Um, if you are interested in becoming a, a patron, patreon.com slash hobo with wood. I would appreciate anybody that signs up. And uh, all of the links on hobo with wood.com. You got lots of files that are available for download. Uh, there are a couple of free files in there. Um, I'll probably put, I know, I am. I'm going to put this file for free on hobowithwood.com. For free. It will be free for at least the next three months. Uh, this is uh, April, May. It'll be May of 2023. So for the next three months, this file will be free on hobowithwood.com. So you don't even have to bother trying to do the uh, creation if you want this particular site. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Uh, check out the shop supplies and Hobo with Wood for all of Hobo supplies. If you click on those, that also helps me out. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next video.